Welcome back to At The Van Wazel. I'm Mary Bensel, your host, and as I promised, I have my boss here with me. He of the great smile, Marlon Brown, our new city manager. Welcome, Marlon. Thank you, Mary. Thanks for having me, and Mary is really my boss. <laughs> <laughs> only on good days, yes. only on good days. Yeah. But, uh, you know, in your bio, it says the islands of Trinidad, Trinidad and Tobago. I have never, I've been a lot to the Caribbean, but I've never been. Tell us about Trinidad and Tobago, what it was like growing up there. See, that means Trinidad and Tobago is the best kept secret. There you go. You know, since uh, Mary doesn't know, Mary's a world traveler. I so, am, I am. So she should know. Um, it, it was awesome. I mean, growing up in the, what they call the twin islands of Trinidad and Tobago, they, they are the last islands in the Caribbean uh, chain, right off the coast of uh, Venezuela. Venezuela? Oh, yeah, wow. Right off the coast of Venezuela. Very, very close uh, to Venezuela. You would swear that we would be able to speak Spanish. Yeah, exactly. But, but we're, <laughs> we're an English-speaking uh, Caribbean country. And, um, you know, growing up, you know, growing up in Trinidad, you know, you, you, you felt that that was your world in which you grew up in. Um, you know, you had all the, your family there. Um, you went to school there. You, 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 you know, did sports. You um, did all of the cultural activities mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. in Trinidad and Tobago. And a little known fact, some of your viewers may know, Trinidad, uh, was the or is the place where the steel drum, the steel yep. pan, oh, was, invent steel was invented? Um, and again, because oil was one of its natural commodities, oh, so that it, makes sense. Yeah, it exported a lot of oil, and so the the, the drums that you uh, use for oil it was turned into a musical instrument. See, that's what I like about artists. We are multi-talented, you know? I know. I tell I know. you that every day, right? I know. You, you can see a rock on the ground and turn that turn into it. some type of musical instrument, I'm Natasha sure. Natasha did that right during the vaccination <laughs> clinic. She was doing that sort of thing. She found a rock and she turned did. it into a musical no, we were, instrument. All of my papers were blowing everywhere, and she ran over and got rocks and was handling everything. But you. what made you decide to leave and come to the States? So um, I'll tell you, as, as, a, as a kid, um, you know, you saw a lot of shows, uh, American made shows, you know, Superman, Batman, The Lone Ranger. And I said, you know, I want to be Superman and Batman. Oh, so did you really? I said, no, I'm, I'm, only, I'm only kidding. Um, actually, the reason I left uh, Trinidad was, again, everyone's uh, dream was to uh, follow their, their education. And um, I wanted to obviously go to, uh, to college. And growing up in Trinidad, I played soccer. Soccer was my, my, mm -hmm. my sport. And I got an offer from West Virginia University to play for them. Oh, cool. And actually uh, did my undergrad at West Virginia, West Virginia University. Did not spend a lot of time playing soccer. No. Uh, just, just spent one yeah, semester. but you could have killed everybody. You could have been fantastic. I, I probably would have mowed everyone down <laughs> with my uh, Well, I know you take skill. me out on every sport yeah, we yeah, do together. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I quickly realized that uh, uh, playing sport was not necessarily where I wanted to, to, to be and focused more on my education, education. and my schoolwork. And it yes. seems like you got really into transportation back. Yes, yeah, so um, at West Virginia, my, my bachelor's actually is in geography, um, urban planning, and uh, went to uh, Georgia Tech in Atlanta to uh, get a master's. Is that the Georgia Bulldogs? Mary Benson. No? <laughs> you don't dare tell someone who went to Georgia Tech that they're the Bulldogs. Oh. We, had the, we, were the, we had the Yellow Jackets. Oh, and, okay, um, the famous Yellow Jackets. I remember that. <laughs> yeah, sure, right. And so that is, that's where I uh, studied uh, urban and regional planning uh, specifically and uh, you know, focused more on the transportation area. And when I went to Tallahassee for my first job, is where I focused in transportation planning. So then you came here to Sarasota, and I remember when you first came, and it was a lot, wasn't it? Just a it, it, it was. It was a lot to, to consume. Little did I, little did I know that uh, there there was a, a city government that also had a performing, a performing arts, arts hall. <laughs> um, and and again, Mary, uh, uh, you know, just hearing the history of the Van Weasel where it was, where it was at one time, and, and, yeah. and what you, you know, did in terms of Bob Bartolotta hiring you right, and, right. and giving, giving you a mandate. Yes, he did. <laughs> and, Scared me to death. <laughs> <laughs> and lo and behold, um, you know, you've, you, you've kind of, you know, hit it out of the park in terms of what you've done in terms of not only the quality of shows, but turning uh, the Van Weasel Performing Arts Hall around. 
And again, a lot oh, of credit you, you know, goes to you and, and your foresight and your vision and how you handle the, man the, the management of this facility. This, this, so, this year has been beyond anything I could ever imagine. Could, yes. You know, I'm, I'm a nervous person anyway, Marlon. I'll tell Marlon Re every really, year we're not really, going to make really it. Really, Mary? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I always say, we won't have a good year this year, and of course we'll have a fabulous year. Right. But then COVID hit, yes. and uh, I'll never forget that Friday morning when who was then both of our bosses, Tom Barwin called yes. and said, get the arts groups together. And we had to talk about closing yeah. everything down. Yeah. And you have been a fabulous shoulder to lean on. You know, whenever I had a problem, I called Marlon. Right. I can remember once calling you and literally sobbing on the phone because something was so horrible. Yeah. And you were always, now Mary Bensel, yeah. you know, just hold it together. And you've been fantastic in that way. And it's, it's a, a huge honor, I think, that, you know, when Tom resigned and retired, that, you know, the commissioners immediately went straight to you. They said, oh, we're gonna have a national search, and the next thing I know, you were the city manager, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Did it scare you, taking over something that big? No, no not necessarily, because again, Mary, again, you and I have worked for almost 12 years, and you know uh, the level of responsibilities I held as the deputy city manager, right, right. my, my it was previous a lot. role, exactly. Yes. And so, um, handling a lot of the day-to-day, -day, although you reported more directly to oh. Tom Bowen, um, yeah, I, but getting Tom was difficult <laughs> at times, so I had so to that's call you. you. Me all the time, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and so, you know, the responsibilities in terms of the day-to-day -day and the department directors uh, having sort of my ear, yeah. um, it was an, it was a, an easy transition. The, the more difficult part was obviously now having the commissioners um, and, uh, you know, re reporting to them directly, doing the one-on-ones mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. them, the weekly meetings with them, and also our constituents, our, the, the, the community and the public uh, being responsive to them as well. Because, again, I consider myself more of a, the traditional manager. Yeah. I want to make sure that when you turn the tap on, the water flows. When you flush the toilet, it goes it, to it correct, works. the right yes. place. Exactly. When you call 911. And so, um, you know, the transition of managing the city was an easy transition. But again, getting accustomed to the, the weekly meetings with the city commissioners, uh, constituents and their, their constituents calling you directly or emailing you, that was a harder transition. But luckily, Mary, we have a talented team around us, yourself yeah, you do. and the other you know, department directors. Well, what keeps you up at night? Well, um, one of the, the key things that I did uh, immediately was ensuring that those things that keep you up at night um, were being handled immediately by me. So department directors such as uh, Stacey Mason, who is over the human resources, personnel issues, those are the things that if something goes awry, you want to make sure that someone has direct, immediate uh, contact. contact with you and that I can respond immediately and also inform the commissioners. Uh, the budget and our finances. So Kelly Strickland, who is a finance director, reporting directly to and me. And we're kind of happy the budget has been in, in good shape when you think with the crisis that we have been under, it's, it's really done yeah, well, the and, city. And again, Mary, again, to your point, you know, when COVID hit, it, it brought all of us to a, sort of a, a new level of, you know, of an experience where, uh, you know, something that you did not think about <laughs> yeah. all of a sudden happened. Exactly. And so with you in terms of shuttering the venue, um, us in terms of trying to see how to really best manage our finances and our personnel, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. given that we were not providing some of the necessary services that we usually provided. Yes, we wanted to make sure that uh, law enforcement was still on the streets. Absolutely. That, that solid waste was still being picked up, that when you turn on the tap, you're still getting water. But again, trying to then um, sort of right size our organization to be responsive to the ongoing needs, but not necessarily the similar we, things. We, we were concerned about the businesses, the right, small businesses. Right. You saw but, things closing. And but Mary, think about what you had to do in terms of oh, the yeah. venue being shuttered and, and the decisions that you had to make in terms of what was necessary and what was not. Absolutely. And so some of those things you know, did help us in terms of uh, managing our budget, managing our finances, that we were able to, to stay above water to be able to continue uh, providing the services as the new fiscal year started. Yeah, that was, that was really special. I, yeah. I will tell you, one of my favorite memories of you was you and your wife 
Joan, she, she's super. How Joan, she puts up with you, yeah. Joan. You know? I don't know how she does it. You know, but, especially you have two yeah. boys who I still think of as little, and they're probably you know yeah, right. taller than Adults, I am. Yeah. But you and Joan at Kenny G, and oh, he my. stopped and performed right in front of you two on a little platform. And this, and I say he has a good smile, and he does, everybody. But you know, that was you were really what, so what thrilled memory, that night. What a memory! He's and, coming and back. You know, I, I saw that, and I, Mary, <laughs> we will be there, and hopefully he comes out right you know, there <laughs> on, from you know from the audience again. And you know, that's one of the great experiences of this hall, is that you know when a performance starts and you know the performer kind of surprises you know sort of you know how they come out yeah to, 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 yeah to, it's different to isn't it yeah. like lion king and brought yeah, the animals exactly down, and there, you know? there was kenny g's you know you know you're hearing the music you know but you don't know where, where he is, is because he? where is he's he? not on the stage and there he comes in the background and he's yeah. stopping and, and entertaining individuals and he came right in front of us and sort of mesmerized us with his you know performance i know i know and, and so that was an amazing that was a uh, an amazing memory and one that would you know live in our memories for a i, really I have time. so many memories marlon of great performers yeah. you know and my favorite thing to do is to watch the audience yeah. because i i'm so happy when the audience is happy and right. we had a different audience this weekend we did a vaccination clinic and we did we people did. were we did. so happy we did yeah and again thanks to the, the mayor and yeah, the department of job. health you know chuck henry and and the team and the, and the and Lena Drain and, and Dr. And, Gordillo, you know, and, um, and, and Dr. Gordillo D Dio and, and all of those volunteers from the medical uh, profession and even those who are non medical that yeah, came out like and, yeah, and volunteered their time and, and, and it was really a tremendous success. Um, having you know almost three thousand individuals coming for a first dose, and Mary, thank you yes. for allowing us to use you know the facilities and and the the, the parking well, it's, area. It's so important to us but, because we got to get people back in this right, theater, right, you know. Right. And just you know the mayor for his continued per he persistence stop, he? and perseverance he did to not making stop. sure, yeah. And he and his Brody shirt. Oh, you his know. Brody shirt and his <laughs> yeah, mayor cap, yeah, and he was you know. out directing traffic. Exactly. I love so, that. You know? uh, so yeah, so thank you very much to everyone who really participated and in we those all, four days. And we all people brought their dogs. I mean, to, so to be, many of to the be dogs. Vaccinated? Oh, we did at least twenty <laughs> dogs. You know, but the dogs were so cute and yeah. happy, and yeah, you know, yeah. and and now we have a possible new performing arts hall. Yes, you know? yes, and yes, and and uh, and again, just a transformation that you know individuals will see ten to fifteen years from now. Just taking everything that they once saw here and turning it into a blue green oasis you know A.G. Yes. Laffley and Bill Waddell, oh Kathy Leighton and the you know the Bay Park Conservancy and now again Mary working with you and your team and also Cheryl Mel Meldeson Mendelsohn, from yeah. the uh, Van Weser Foundation to just envision a whole new performing arts uh, center, center yeah. uh, a 21st century maybe into the 22nd you know 22nd century. You know having century, it being a little know. more experiential and and you know, I was telling, the, uh, talking about we did thirty-nine thousand students had experiences this mm -hmm. year. We're, I'm sure we'll hit that. In 40, terms of the education number. program, education yes. program, and and that's the big thing too. We hope in this new center we can expand education right. Right. and education for seniors as well. Because you know, after I exactly. retire, I need somewhere to go. You know, <laughs> you, you need to be still educated, <laughs> yes, Mary. I do. Boy, do I ever. You know, a basket right. weaving is not my thing. You know, <laughs> but I um, I hope people realize how difficult the city manager's job is because you get the blame and the credit, right. but it's, it's if, if there's a pothole in your street or if, if it's a water main break, right. God forbid, or the bridge you know, has a closing. And but Mary, again, as I said, you know, we have a lot of talented individuals, sure yourself do. included, and I know that even though I may get a call at 2 a.m. in the morning or whether it's at, at 2 p.m. In the, in, the, in the afternoon, that I know we have a talented uh, set of individuals, 750 of them, who know how to get the job done, who know how to take care of an issue. Well, thank you for taking the job. You are just a, a real idol of mine, and I think um, you and Joan have been spectacular leaders for me and, thank and you, models. Mary. And thank you, Mary. I, I just wish you all the greatest luck in the world with this job, sir, but uh, be calm, you know? Uh, I, uh, <laughs> Coming for me, uh, that's Mary, important. Yes, Mary, as, you, as long as you don't call me 2 a.m. in the morning there with, you go. You know, with you know, Aretha or, we'll or, get on the or bus. someone that, yeah, <laughs> uh, you know, I, I will take that. But Mary, again, you know, I, I thank you again for your leadership here. 
um, your vision, and again, some of the awesome and amazing performances and acts that you have brought to this I love it. lovely purple, purple building. building. They don't so, forget this building. Exactly, exactly. So anyway, we'll be back in a minute at the Van Wezel to hear about some of the out-of-the-box experiences that Natasha has got going for us. And we'll be back in a minute.